Welcome to Timbro's Faith University. The title of this lesson is More Than Conquerors. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Lord, we lift you up, Father. Lord, we just want to thank you for forgiving us, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for all your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you on this day for your strategies, Lord Jesus, you put in place for us to be more than conquerors. We thank you for your plan and your provision, Lord Jesus. We just want to say thank you, Lord Jesus, for your inseparable love, Father. So we bless you on this day, Lord Jesus. We ask you to be with us as we go through your word, Lord Jesus, as we dig into your word, Lord Jesus, to hear what you have to tell us, Father. Father, we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. More than conquerors. This, this, the scripture lesson text comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. The golden lesson text is Romans 8 and 31. In Romans 8 and 31, it reads, what shall we say when what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? The background scriptures used in this lesson was authored by Paul. The time period was AD 56, and the place was Corinth. In this lesson, we will talk about how God made those that love him more than conquerors. We'll discuss God's plan, God's purpose, God's provision, and God's power, and how it relates to those, to making those that love him more than conquerors. The lesson outline is broken into four sections. God's purpose, God's plan, God's provision, and God's power. The first section, God's purpose, is covered by Romans 8 and 28. And the scripture reads, And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. As we look at Romans 8 and 28, we see that God causes everything to work together for those who love God and those that are called according to his purpose. And as we overview God's purpose for this lesson, we think about all things working together for good, but we may not, when we think about it, we usually think about our own good, but good is for the sake of all believers and even so for God's purposes. After all, we were called according to God's purpose, not our own purpose. And we'll move on to the next section, which is God's plan. And it's covered in Romans 8, 29 through 30. Romans 8 and 29 reads, For whom did he foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son that he may be among he may be firstborn among many brethren when we look at 29 we see that god knew all his people in advance he chose them to become his son and his son will be the firstborn among many brethren brothers and sisters meaning us in Romans 8 and 30, it reads, Moreover did he predestinate, he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. When we look at Romans 30, we see that God chose them. God called them to come to him. God gave them right standing with him. And God gave them his glory. He glorified them. When we overview God's plan, we see that if we are all God's children, if we're God's children, is it because he planned for us to be his children? 
He planned for us to be his children. He chose us before the foundations of the world. He called us unto himself through preaching of the gospel. In faith, we responded to his call and we were justified and declared not guilty. Not guilty for our sins. In God's sight, we are not guilty. We are not guilty of our sins because he pre-planned for us to be so more than conquerors. We'll move on to the next section, God's provision, which is covered in Romans 31 and 36. In Romans 31, it reads, What shall we say to these things? For if God be with, if God, but if God be for us, whom can be against us? When we look at Romans 31, we just look at the scripture and we see that if God's for us, who can be against us? Because he already chose us. He already justified us and he already glorified us. So who can be against us at this point? We have to follow the plan, the plan that he laid out. When we go to Romans 8 and 32, it reads, He had spared not his he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us. How sh how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The Lord spared not his only son. He gave him up for all of us. So what else wouldn't he give to us? What else wouldn't he allow us to have as long as it falls within his will? In Romans 8, 33, it reads, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Now God laid out a plan for us. He sent, he sent his, he gave up his only son. And he did, he chose us. So who can, who can charge an elect amongst us? Who can accuse us of anything? God has, God has chosen us and he's made us right standing with himself. In Romans 8 and 34, who that, who is he that commandeth? Is it Christ that died? Yeah, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make it intercession for us. When we look at 34, God, Jesus, Jesus Christ died for us and he risen his life again for us. And he's sitting at the right, the, the place of honor at God's right hand. And he's intercessing, he's, he's pleading for us. The plan is coming into play that we will be more, we are more than conquerors. In Romans 8 and 34, it's gonna be 8 and 35, it reads, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or soul, sword, when we look at 30, verse 35, can anything separate us from God's, from Christ's love? When we, when we go through things, none of those things can separate us from it. None of those things, being persecuted, being hungry, destitute, in danger, threatened of death, none of these things can separate us from God's love because he, he made provision for us to be more than conquerors. In Romans 8 and 36, it reads, As it is written, for the sake we are killed all day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So there's already a force against us, and God knew this. That's why he made provision for us to be more than conquerors. He looked at every aspect that we might be going through. We'll go through, we'll go, we'll go over now the overview of God's provision. God gave his only son for us. He provided justification for us sinners. And he provided an inseparable love 
for us to be more than conquerors. Then the last section is God's power. And it's covered in Romans 8 and 37 through 39. 8 and 37, Romans 8 and 37 reads, Now, nah, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. So despite anything that we might go through, anything that we may come upon, the victory is ours through Christ, whom loves us. The victory is ours because he had a plan so far, we know the purpose, we know the plan, we know that he's providing for the plan to come into place. As we move on to verse Romans 8 and 30, 38, we'll continue on in Romans 8 and 39 because they kind of go together. So we'll just read them all at one time and then we'll talk about both of these scriptures. Romans 8 and 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we look at both these scriptures, we see that there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. Death nor life, angels nor demons, neither fear, fear that may come today or worrying about tomorrow, no other power can separate us from God's love. That is amazing. As we look over God's love, God's power as that section, because we belong to God, there's nothing that can come upon us that would separate us from him. God's love is stronger than any worldly or any force that may penetrate, may try to penetrate our relationship with Jesus Christ. He designed it that way. Let's go over a few questions that relates to the lesson. And if you have any other questions, reach out to Timbrel Church University and they will we'll get an answer as soon as possible. The first question I wanna um, talk about is how does the promise in Romans 8 and 28 specific, specifically apply? The promise in, eight, in Romans 8 and 28 applies to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. That's the prerequisite. That's how it applies. That's the prerequisite for being more than conquerors. The next question, why does Paul speak of our glorification as a past accomplishment? And this relates to God in the section we talked about, God's provision. When Paul speaks about this, he speaks about it as an accomplished fact because in the mind of God, this plan that we are more than conquerors has already happened. And there's nothing that can prevent the outcome. Not our mistakes, not our falls, nothing can prevent for the outcome from happening. The next question, how did God prove that he was on the side of his, of his chosen ones? God chose us, he chose us. And he proved it when he gave up his only begotten son for us and delivered him for us once that's a once he did that explains why he's on our side it, it mean that is one of the reasons why we can we we're for sure that he's on our side what false conclusions that suffering can sometimes lead us to when we're suffering when we're going through things what conclusions? The conclusions, it may be that there's some sort of separation, but that's that's not true. Since there's no compensation in Christ, we learn that there's no separation in him either. Christ laid out this plan for us to be victorious. So we're going to go through things. It, it, he, the, he didn't list all, all of those items that we may go through and say that his love is sep inseparable for us to come to any conclusion outside it, we will have the victory in God.
The next question, why, will, why should we never boast about being more than conquerors? Any spiritual victories is not achieved through our own strength or our own power or our own planning. Everything is achieved through the love of, of God. Paul says in, in Philippians 4 and 13 that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. All things, but it's through Christ. So we cannot boast about being more than conquerors. We can't boast about any anything. That is our lesson um, for today. But I just want to summarize what we covered today. In this lesson, we talked about God, how God made those that love him more than conquerors. We discussed God's purpose. We discussed God's plan. We discussed his provision. And we discussed his power and how it relates to those who love God. God pre-planned for us to be victorious in Christ. Victory means that we overcome all obstacles against us. So there will be obstacles. We are overcomer of we are overcome. We will overcome temptation, evil devices, anything that's set for set forward for us to stumble, we will overcome. Victory also means that we will be successful in accomplishing God's will, advancing the kingdom. We are equipped and ready. We are equipped and ready. God laid the plan out. And he took care of every step along the way for, uh, for us to do good work. Do the work of the Lord that he set forth for us. We are more than conquerors. At this opportunity, we would like to give you a chance to give. You can give to Timbrel Church in the following ways. Through Cash App. You can give to Cash App dollar sign Timberl Church INC. Or you can give through the Givelify app by searching Timberl Church. Or at our website, www.give to Timberl.info. I hope that this class was as inspiring to, to, to you as it was to me. And we thank you. And we want to close out this lesson in prayer. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Lord, we lift you up on this day because you have been so awesome, Father. You have been so awesome. You laid out a plan for us to be more than conquerors, Lord. You played out a plan that no nothing can penetrate. We just thank you today because you showed us in the simple form what it means to be more than conquerors, what it takes, what you did for us, and how it can help us navigate through life, knowing that anything that we come go through, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for it. All we have to do is your will, and all we have to do, Father, is love you hallelujah you love us father if you didn't love us you wouldn't have given up your only son so we thank you father and we lift you up and we praise you we thank you for sharing your word with us today and we bless you in jesus name amen